All right, Richard, my dude, welcome to the Free Hill Life podcast. It's been a long time coming. How's it going? I'm perfect. So I'm very excited. I love it. Uh, Guten Morgen, I guess I should say for me. Uh, we are in the afternoon, almost <laughs> evening. So uh, in, in your place, it's morning. <laughs> yeah, it is morning. I think uh, my German is limited, but uh, I'm. We've known each other for. Uh, we were talking about it. I mean, we've known each other for. 20 years now, which is super crazy. And yeah. um, I'm excited to have you on. And and I kind of wanted to start a little bit um, getting a little history about where you're from, where you grew up and, and kind of, yeah, how did, how did, I guess, where, where did you tell, tell the people where you grew up and everything? Yeah, I'm, I'm from Germany and born in Munich. So, and I raised up in Munich. So Munich is probably known in uh, in the world as the, the city with the Oktoberfest. And uh, we have the mountains right uh, 80 kilometers away from Munich. So uh, it's a perfect uh, place to go skiing. We have uh, great lakes uh, around Munich. So it's, it's perfect known as a very nice sport area. Yeah, and we have some big... Um, Big companies, international companies in Munich, like uh, Apple, Microsoft, uh, Google. So they are all based in Munich because they like it here. Yeah, no, it's a beautiful city. I mean, it's and for people that haven't been to Germany, I mean, Munich isn't it's close to the mountains, but it's not. Uh, I mean, it's not in the mountains, right? Like, I mean, you're probably what, like an hour Couple yeah, hours. it's about an hour. It's you can compare it like uh, Denver. So Denver, from Denver, you can see the mountains, and the same is from Munich. So we have, if we have the south winds, um, this is called Föhn in in, in German. Then uh, you really can see the mountains very clear. So you you have the feeling it's just um, in, in the backyard. Yeah. No, that's amazing. Um, so do you when you were growing up in Munich, did you uh I guess were you like did you grow up in a family that was very involved with the outdoors or out no. sport or anything like that? No, 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 not really. So that that's really funny because um um I was um yeah, after school I started an education in a, in a sport shop and that was the beginning of my yeah my career in with with doing sports. So I sold sport equipment and then I started skiing uh, in uh, 1978. And then I was alpine skiing probably 15 years, 16 years. And then um, yeah, in the 20s I started yeah I, I get bored with alpine skiing. And then uh, I start to work for Patagonia. And at Patagonia, I had the first contact with Telemark. So I my first training on Telemark ski was with Paul Parker. So he did the first uh, hmm. guiding. And yeah, and then I also skied with uh, Yvon Chouina, so the owner of uh, Patagonia. And this was uh, happened in Chamonix because... Um, Hmm. I was working at Patagonia for as a the store manager in the Munich store, and for the just to get in the feeling of Patagonia, I worked four weeks at the Chamonix Patagonia store. So I was in the middle of the Alps, right across from the uh, Mont Blanc. Yeah, when I was looking out of my hotel window, I just saw uh, on the summit of uh, the Mont Blanc. So it was a great experience. Yeah, that's crazy, man. To think that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to think that your first experience with Telemark was with Paul Parker, who for yeah. people that aren't familiar with Paul, I mean, he wrote the book, literally a book on free heel skiing, right. um, and and has yeah. been a, a a part of Telemark history in a lot of different ways. And obviously, Yvonne Chouinard, uh, who started Patagonia. I mean, that's that's a pretty good group of guys to go Telemark skiing <laughs> in Chamonix. Absolutely, to start yeah. your your telemark journey <laughs> that's funny I, so here here's a funny question because i i've had a couple people on the podcast that i think kind of had a similar 
uh, similar situation to you. Like they, somehow they were involved with Patagonia okay. and Yvonne Chouinard was a telemark skier. I mean, I don't know if I've, I can't remember if I've talked to anybody who skied with Yvonne Chouinard. I mean, was, was he a good telemark skier? I always think of him as a surfer now. Right. But yeah, I think he's a good, you know, he, yeah, I think he was not a an, an perfect fast telemarker, but he has a, a very good style. Yeah. So, and, um, yeah, probably the better one is, uh, the Paul Parker. So he is much more experienced, but I, I also went uh, surfing with, uh, with I- Yvonne. Uh, so it's a great experience. I was also climbing. So, uh, um, so we have been at, uh, um, uh, in the Yosemite National Park uh, in the Camp 4. So we were climbing on the nose, on the base of the nose. So, yeah, because due to the, uh, the, the sales meeting we organized with Patagonia in Europe and also in, in, in North America, so always he, Yvonne was there and he did some clinics and speech. So, yeah, that was good because he's very uh, a very inspiring person. So he, he really... Yeah, gave me a lot of good um, good ideas um, regarding my my sportive life, you know. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, Telemark in the 1980s in Europe was probably very small, I would assume, right? Um, I think it, it at that time uh, Telemark was little, so it was yeah, also the gear was uh, compared to the Alpine gear, it was like, yeah, phew, my first uh, Telemark uh, uh, steps I made on leather boots and uh, on bamboo uh, poles and, and, and old small spaghetti sheets. So, boy, it was, it was really hard. Uh, and, and, yeah, no, it was not so easy, <laughs> especially on, on hard pist and, and icy ground. So not easy, but very, very challenging. Yeah. What, when you guys, when you guys sort of got into Telemark during that Patagonia time period, um, when you were the shop manager, was it, was it pretty backcountry focused? I'm assuming, especially with the equipment you were yeah. using. Um, yeah. I'm assuming yeah. it was more Alpine, Alpine style going and hiking and that kind of thing. Absolutely. So it was pretty much more, uh, backcountry, uh, because, on pist, the equipment was not really very, very good to use. Yeah, no, that's that's cool. Well, so what? So what did you do after Patagonia? I didn't even know. That's so funny because I met you way later on, so I didn't even know that's where you started, which is so crazy. Um, I mean, so did, after the Patagonia shop in Munich, what what did you end up doing after that? Yeah, so then after one work, uh, one year working as a store manager in the Munich store, so I I changed into the wholesale wholesale business. So then, um, yeah, I worked as a manager, uh, sales and marketing manager uh, for for different uh, countries. And then uh, after eight year years experience with Patagonia, I left the company and I founded my own agency, my own sales agency. So then I start with, um, yeah, with Telemark first. So my first uh, brand was Crispy Telemark Boots. Then uh, I was the distributor for G3 bindings and uh, Osnes skis. So that was really funny. Mm. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, yeah, because Osnes is... Uh... Is that Norwegian or Swedish? I always forget. I think no, it's, it's Swedish, a, right? It's it's Norwegian. Norwegian. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. I always I always I, I have to remember my alphabet with the little circle above the A. That's right. The yeah. Oa. It's, it's it's written A, but you you pronounce it Osnes or Osnes, yeah, something like that. So oh, um, Osnes. Yeah. And uh, it was the V20. So it was uh, at that time one of the first carving telemark skis so it was yeah it was pretty nice yeah and then yeah um after that um i think the problem is always if you're working in the wholesale business so uh, brands are coming and going and so and then yeah years later um i got the possibility to take over the distribution of kahu skis 
And that's where everything has begun, <laughs> you know? So yeah. uh, parallel, I what, organized what year did you... this Dubai Telemark Festival. So that, that was the beginning in organizing Telemark festivals. Yeah, and then uh, I get in contact to this crazy U.S. telemarkers. <laughs> Well, so, okay. So what, what year did you take over the Carhu distribution? Like probably like late nineties or early two thousands? Yeah, it was, um, it was, when was it? Uh, 20, 2002 or 2003. Yeah. Probably at that time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cause it would have been, uh, yeah. And th this is how we met, which was really cool because, um, Carhu had so yeah, I mean you came in at a cool time too because they had just made the Jack ski, right, right, that which was, was based fast, which fast ski, whoa, crazy. That that totally. was like my yeah. that was like mind blowing, right? Like yeah, there's this yeah. big fat orange ski. It's yeah. like ninety underfoot. If and people don't, uh, Carhu sometimes because it's not around anymore, it doesn't really get the credit. Yeah. Um, but the Jack ski was really the first fat telemark ski in in terms of uh you know it and and it kind of had like that that twin tip because it was based on the line mothership right, right, right. um it was pretty dramatic but um and yeah you were probably working with Ted McGinnis which right. is uh was at Carhu in in America um I don't, what was it like I mean telemark got changed a lot in that early 2000s in terms of what type of skis we were using. I mean, what was it like in Europe from your point of view? Yeah, that was really crazy because when I got my first Kaho checks and uh, when I have mounted them and I uh, went on on, on on the snow or in, in, in Stubai or the people really didn't believe what 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 this is on my, my foot. So... They said, "Hey, where are you going? You go, you going water sliding or something like that." So they didn't expect that uh, because at that time skis um, have been very long and 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 and, and very yeah uh, narrow. But uh, the Karu Czech was really a great ski. It was fat and uh, a twin tip, and yeah, so absolutely crazy. And at that time, even the style, clothing style was very narrow. So people, yeah, it's, it's, it, they really look different. And then, yeah, when, when the Caro team and you and, 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 and all the others uh, came to, to uh, Stubai with the baggy clothing. So that was a, a revolution. <laughs> people, people <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. You, 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 the team were totally crazy and that was m my best experience to meet the Cairo team with Lorenzo Wurster, Ty Dyberry, Josh Madsen, of course, you <laughs> yourself. And that was really one of the best experience at that time. That's so funny. And, and thank you too. Uh, to be honest, a lot of, a lot of my journey in telemark was started with you because I had just gotten on the Carhu team but I remember getting that invite to go to Stubai to your festival. And I was like, this is crazy. This guy in Germany is like inviting us over, you know, he's yeah. going to give us lodging and yeah. lift tickets. And I mean, you know, I, I think uh, I have so many fond memories of uh, Stubai, you know, all because you were kind enough to bring us over and you were excited I mean, I, I'll always remember. Here's a couple of memories I have for sure. Glue vine. The first yeah. time I ever had glue vine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. coming off the tram and they handed me glue vine and I'm like, <laughs> what is this? Which is like a mold mold wine for people that yeah. don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I re partying in ski boots. I remember Opry ski and I'm like, these people yeah. don't even take their ski boots off at the bar. No, what no. is going on here? <laughs> but yeah. uh yeah, that does that does seem like a different time because you've got a uh, yeah the baggy clothes twin tip skis. We had like the the Carhu Agent, which was the yeah. a full twin tip, yeah. and yeah, and then uh, Lorenzo was kind of the big mountain guy. Me and Dayberry were sort of the part guys, and and yeah, yeah. I mean you were uh, 
you put on like a skier cross or a telecross yeah. for, a, yeah. which was pretty early on. I mean, I think you were the first Absolutely. one to do that in Europe, right? Yeah. So this is really, I think I got the idea that, uh, we have to do some different, uh, approach, uh, for racing because, um, at, at that time, fist racing, telemark racing, uh, has been enabled, but, um, you know, for me, uh, looking at the, at the, at the telemarker, uh, racing in a, in a race suit, um, I, I think that really was not very good looking. And, um, I thought that probably a telecross would be the best, uh, presentation of, of, of telemarking. So yeah, the people who have, uh, wear clothy baggy, uh, uh, baggy clothing and yeah, the helmet. So they, they had a cool style. So it was good looking and people really liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, and that, and so was, did you start the Stubai festival ar around, was that the first year that we came in like 2005 or had you started it before that? Yeah. 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 I think it was 2004 when you have been here yeah, to Stubai and I started uh, 2001. Yeah. Uh, Stubai. So I did it uh, 10 years and then I switched over to Hintertux and I'm now um, doing it yeah, since 13 years I'm in Hintertux. So I'm, I'm at the moment I'm around 24 years or 23 years in Telemark. Yeah. So. Wow. That time, time does fly my friend. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's too I, fast. Uh... <laughs> I I know I was I was thinking I'm like man I'm I'm getting gray hairs now and I was a young man when I met you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it was that's a great funny. nice time. Well, Remember when when we have been at Schnalztal with with my friend Patrick? Oh. And we we played tis te yep. tis tennis. So we 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 have been at the hotel on the top of the mountain, three thousand uh, three hundred meters. And we played tish tennis and 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 with the swimming pool uh, on the top. So yep. yeah, so we we really uh, got a great time there. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's actually a really cool place that people should know about is Schnalzdal, which yeah. for people that are have never heard of this place, it's near Bolzano, Italy, and right. uh, on the border of. It's in Austria, right? It's Austria, but right on the border of Italy. Yeah, it's Italy. It's South uh, South Tyrol. It's Italy. South Tyrol. Yeah, half of the glacier is on Austria side, and the other half, uh, uh, the south part, is on in on in Italy. So, but you only can reach uh, it from uh, by car from uh, from Italy. But you can walk from Austria up to the glacier. Um, yeah, from Ötztal. Yeah. And it definitely a really cool place. Cause I remember you were doing an event there. I came over for that. Um, and if people ever want to go ski there, it is a very, very interesting place because, um, it's where Utsi the ice man is. So there's like yeah, this like yeah, museum right. for right. the, the ice, the, they found this ancient guy caveman frozen in the eye in the glacier. Yeah, so that's pretty yeah. cool. Um, yeah. But honestly, the food, the food experience of Schnalzdal is so interesting because uh, it's like I, I remember walking into to like the restaurant, you know, on yeah. the mountain. Yeah. And it's like it's like it's like half half of your choices are like are like schnitzel. Yeah. And like the other the other half is like pasta, you know, yeah, and you're, yeah, it's like yeah. this. It, it really is like this mixture of cultures all in one place. The skiing's fantastic, too. And um, yeah, that's very cool. But yeah. So and that's actually where I met John Faulkner for the first time. I think you had okay. him do a presentation okay. at uh, yeah. at that event, which is uh, really cool. And we've had him on the podcast. So good guy. Um. Well, so, okay. So tell, tell us a little bit now. So that, I mean, this is early two thousands. You have, I know you've always done events. I mean, it, now you're starting to do more events. How many events are you now that it's been like 20 some years, how many events are you doing around Europe? Yeah. So I'm, 
I'm organizing my own events so that it's it's uh, Hintertux, and this is the probably the biggest uh, season opening uh, worldwide because at that place at that time not so many events are happen. But um, yeah, this is my first event, so I open up the Telemark season, and then I uh, co op with some other events. So. I'm, I'm after Hintertux, I'm going to uh, Saiser Alm in, in Italy, South Tyrol. Then we are in Madonna di Campiglio in Pinzolo. There will be the first uh, Telemark World Cup uh, this year. Yeah, and then it goes January, February, March, April, and everything is ending in Murren. So, Telemark only festival, you have been there too. Taylor also have been there too last, uh, last year. So, in, in total, I'm organizing ab- around and or cooperating with 10 to 12 uh, festivals in Europe, in, in four countries in, in the Alps. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to Europe, you're, I mean, you and, and Free Healer, which is your, your company, I mean, it's like when I think of Telemark festivals, like, you're always involved. Like you're always there, you know, for the last 25 years, it's like, you know, I even, even like you said, telemark only, you know, that's Paul flukes event. Yeah. It's like, Nope. Richard's at that one too. He's at, he's he's at every event. Yeah. And, um, I think you've done a phenomenal job of promoting telemark in Europe. I think one thing that we need to mention too is, is, uh, during that time period, you started free healer a, a ma- like a little magazine yeah. that you publish yeah, yeah. yeah. and right. tell it tell us a little bit about that because that's that's a pretty unique thing you've had over in europe yeah so i know the your magazine telemark skier and um the, the main thing is uh, for telemark telemark is really a niche uh, uh sport and um i yeah, during my job as a, a distributor for sport goods and winter sport goods, I got uh, very good contacts to, to the journalists and to the media. And um, probably, of course, the people or the media was quite interested in Telemark the first five, six, seven years. But then mm, the people get bored about or the journalists get bored about Telemark because there was no new things going on. And then... Um, I decided to say, okay, we need a, a own magazine which people uh, can yeah read and brands can advertise. So we need a, a voice, a voice uh, for Telemark. And that's why I founded the magazine Free Healer. Um, the first few years, we did it in a small um, format, in an A5 format, but we had a... a a big print run of 200,000 issues in four languages. So that was really amazing. But at that time, of course, uh, in the industry, there was money left for advertising and the magazine was for free. But um, yeah, I have to collect the money to print and and, and work on, on the layout. Yeah, and then after eight, nine years, so the, the industry was also poor on money. And then I decided to um, to change the format in an A4 format, uh, yeah, like a normal um, sports magazine. And I did it the first years also in four languages, so in French, English, Italian, and German. But then it went into more an English uh, uh, written magazine. In parallel, um, I founded also my the website Free Healer, and then Instagram, Facebook. So now we have a, 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 a complete social media form, a platform uh, online. And of course, yeah, with the Free Healer magazine, which I print two times per year, we have a, a very nice um, offer for the people who are interested in the Telemark sport. That's amazing. That is not an easy task, man. I mean, to do 200,000 copies in four languages. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, That's yeah. Ver- very complicated. And, yeah. uh, I print, print is hard, huh? I mean, I, I mean, obviously I've done similar things with, to you, not to that volume. I mean, that's why like, I hear, I hear those numbers and I'm like, 
That's crazy. I mean, 200,000 and distribution and handing it out for free and dealing with advertising. And I mean, that's the thing. Europe is so complicated in comparison because your mail system is different in each country. You know, the currency is often different in each country. The language, I mean, uh, taxes, tariffs, all that stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty complicated, man. I mean, that, I'm I'm impressed that you've been able to do that. Yeah, the do problem you, was do you almost, feel like uh, you you mentioned. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Europe. Uh, it's more than 25 uh, different countries, uh, many languages. Even when when um, uh, Europe was opening into East Europe, so we we got a lot of new countries, uh, which are we are really happy to have them because uh, now we have uh, Telemark Skier from Poland, from the Czech Republic, from Hungary, from uh, Slovenia. So this is this was really a, a, a very good chance to bring more people into Telemark, and they they really are very enthusiastic and yeah. They coming to Hintertux 2019 before the pandemic. We got 500 uh, telemarkers from 19 different nations. So that was really amazing. Yeah, that's so cool. I mean, it's uh, I yeah, that's that's it, it's a big challenge, man. Europe. I know when when we've talked about it over the years. I mean, Europe is such a it's a challenging place. I think you're probably one of the few people that's been around in in not only winter sport, but Telemark specifically for as long as you have. Um, people have tried, you know, I was, I was just thinking of, uh, people have kind of come in and tried different things over the years. And, and I, I think you're probably the longest running as far as I can remember uh, in terms of Telemark specific winter sport stuff, right? Yeah, that's, I have the same experience. So I saw many people coming and going. So, uh, yeah, but I, I also have friends, which I'm in contact since 20 years. And uh, I know, for example, mm-hmm. Luca Gasparini. Yeah, he will be one of my presenter yeah, at, at the Freehilder Campus. Uh, yeah, he is a great guy. And I know him since 20 years. And of course, Bob Maserai, for example, he is yeah, Bob. one of my buddies and John Faulkner. Yeah. So the lost guys from, uh, from Verbier. Yeah. So, um, that, that's not, a, uh, yeah. The only thing is I'm getting older. So, uh, that's, that's the point. So we need, uh, <laughs> we, we need uh, more people, young people, but I also see an increase in that, in that, that, uh, case. So, uh, many um, parents with their kids going uh, coming up to to Telemark, but yeah, the main the main problem we have with Telemark is we we don't have sources like Alpine skiing. They start in the kindergarten or uh, in school. They go to uh, school vacations, and we yeah we have to get our uh, people out of of those mixed up uh, uh, public like snowboarders and board skiers. Yeah, so that's a little bit the problem because in no ski school, you will start with Telemark. So uh, that's that's a kind of a problem we have with uh, the, the development of Telemark sports worldwide. Yeah. Yeah, youth, youth Telemark definitely has been a challenge. I think... Um, the perception of Telemark, it's, it's, uh, there's obviously some kids programs around the world that are going on. Um, it's, it is strange though, that we don't have, I think it, maybe it's not strange. I just think we don't have access to the young people equipment and there aren't programs to get people started early. It's obviously not because it's not we see kids doing it all the time. Like at your festivals, there's kids programs and we have kids programs here. Kids love it. I mean, it's, I think it's just, you need to have like a coach, a program, rental gear, that kind of stuff. Um, Well, I, okay. Let's part of why I wanted to have you on this. I want to talk, you mentioned the Telemark campus. You mentioned, mentioned Hintertooks. So you have created 
the free healer opening. This is essentially the opening of the season for North America. And you've put this event on, like you said, it started at Stubai. It's moved to Hintertooks for the last like 13 years. But tell us a little bit about that event coming up. Like what are the dates? How can people get there? What What's involved? What is the Telemark campus? All that good stuff. Yeah, so I started, I moved from, from Stubai after 10 years organizing the Stubai Telemark Festival to Hintertux. And the idea was also to create an, an opening uh, event uh, and also include the, the FIS uh, Telemark World Cup. So that was not able to organize at Stubai, but the Hintertux management, they really were excited. And after three year, um uh, FEO, I call it a free healer European opening. That means FEO. Then uh, we really got the chance to start the Telemark World Cup at Hintertux. So we did it five years and it was really a successful uh, period. And um, yeah, so after five years, they stopped it because the ski club, uh, they were overwhelmed with, with, with too much work. So they were not being able to do it again. So then uh, we did, uh, we had one season uh, a rest and then we started again with a telecross. And now we are doing um, uh, uh, a FIS uh, World Cup trainings camp in, at that same time. So all the athletes are coming and train. And then we have uh, now this year, this year two FIS races. And in the same time, uh, I organized the, the campus, uh, which is meaning train the trainer. So we uh, have international instructors, which are giving clinics to, yeah, to ski lehrer or ski uh, guides and so on. And afterwards, everything is ending into the free healer European opening. So... We start with three days, uh, 13 years ago, and now we have one week of Telemark um, with, yeah, with a whole program. I love that. Well, and part of, part of why I wanted you to talk about this, the date, it's coming up here in a couple weeks, right? In Hintertux. What are the dates again? Yeah, we start with the campus on uh, November 27th, and the campus will take four days. And then uh, on Friday, uh, December 1st, we start with the Free Healer European opening. On Friday, Saturday, we have the, the FIS races. And during the whole week, the, yeah, all the best Telemark athletes will join in the festival for training, for races. Yeah, and we, we expect a um, few hundred uh, international visitors uh, at the festival. Yeah, so I have one booking uh, from from a North American guy. He he was totally excited. He is coming fourteen days, and he books ten workshops. And he said he never saw that. Wow! Big, yeah, <laughs> he was he was really really happy. Yeah, and I'm happy to have him here. I don't want to mention his name. I love, but uh, yeah, that's that will be really exciting. And more that's people, awesome. of course. Well, more people should come yeah, if they uh, are interested, because, you know, that that's if I can say it, because, um, if, for example, um, if you book a ski pass in Hintertux for seven days, then it, it will be around uh, 400, 450 euros. Um, and and uh, bed and breakfast you get for 40 euros. That means um if you compare it to wow. Wales or to Aspen, yeah, you get for a weekend price, you can stay a whole week and go skiing in, in Hintertux. And at that time on the glacier, we have perfect snow conditions and it goes up to 3,250 meters. So perfect, perfect area to start uh, Telemark. That's amazing. Well, I think that's a... And I think that's amazing. And I love to hear that there's somebody from North America coming over. I think this is this is a good opportunity for us to tell everybody that we're going to create a relationship with Free Heal Life and Free Healer in Europe. Richard and I have been talking and, and it, we want to, you know, we feel like we've sort of got similar relationships in the different markets, us in North America, Richard in Europe. 
And so we're going to start working more together to promote his events. Um, we're working on getting some of our protector skis over that are going to be yeah. at a couple of the events this year. Yeah. And um, we've also been uh, – I've sent him some samples of the Bluebird Day Gear products to see if there's a way, since obviously he's got a lot of experience with wholesale in Europe, is to see if there's some uh, opportunities with there. So we're, we're going to keep everyone updated as we sort of go along, but we wanted to do this podcast, one, to get everybody excited for Hintertooks, get everybody ready to go to that uh, free healer opening, uh, European opening, and get get excited for that, but... Um, I'm, I'm really excited to start working together again, man. It's crazy that we've known each other for this long. And uh, I'm, I'm really happy that both of us are still involved with Telemark. But now that we can work together again to, to help pr- bring, bring the two continents together, so to speak. Yeah, that's, that's, I think that's really a, a, a great news that we, uh, we can talk about that, about our uh, cooperation. Because... Uh, t- we have to unite the telemark because this is very important um, that uh, we tell yeah the best things about the telemark sports yeah and bring the people together worldwide yep yeah I think it's great man and and I know we were trying to come over one at least one of us for the opening and I don't think that's going to happen but I think we're going to try and see if there's a way to maybe uh, do some sort of video call for the campus or something. If not, I'm sure that we're going to, we'll get to one of the events throughout the winter, uh, either Taylor or myself. And, uh, but I'm excited. I think this is going to be a lot of fun, my friend. And to be able to push Telemark and bring us together again and, uh, and, and have that relationship. So I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. So should it should be a great winner of uh, events in Europe, and if you haven't been to events in Europe, I'll, I'll I'll make sure to post the schedule that Richard sent me because if you live in North America, like it's worth going to Europe to one of these events because the thing is, I mean, what he was just saying, the cost of skiing is lower in Europe, and some of this terrain that you get access to for much less money is. It's pretty good, people, and the food's good, and the people are good, and uh, the beer's good. <laughs> There's yeah, a lot of good yeah. stuff, so. Yeah, and the girls are nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so now from my point of view, if you fly from, from New York to Colorado or to Utah, probably it takes also four or five hours, so then from New York to Munich, Probably it's three hours more, but uh, then it takes another two hours. Then you are at Hintertux and uh, yep. we have uh, perfect transports. So, uh, no, that's that's it's really worth to 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 make the trip. And then probably it's better to stay uh, one week and then uh, you get really the best experience. Probably you never get in North America. Yeah. So ask Josh. He he has a lot of experience. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to coming back over, man. I, I, uh, it's it's been a while since I've been over there, so I'm I'm looking forward to this. I, I I'm selfishly creating our relationship so I can come to Europe more often. <laughs> yeah, it's a must. It's so. a must. So then we have to drink a beer and uh, get a glühwein. Yeah, and yep. everything will be better. <laughs> I I love that, man. Well, thanks for coming on the podcast today. I'm I'm super excited that we got to announce this this uh, collaboration with Free Healer and Free Heal Life. I think it's awesome. I'm, I I can't wait to have a, a couple of pairs of our skis on on the Testival tour this year. And uh, I'll put all the information about how people can find you in the show notes. So, uh, looking forward to seeing you, brother. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks you to give me the possibility to talk about that. Yeah, so I'm very excited uh, about our cooperation. Yeah, and I'm waiting to see you or to give, to have the possibility to uh, have us both on the slope with your skis with the protective. Yep, the protectors. Yep, I protectors. can't wait. Yeah, me too. Okay, good. So thanks a lot and have a nice day. 
You too. Tschüss. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Josh.